So, brakes. On a winch, there are two options for mid winches. You can either have a mechanical brake or an air brake. And a lot of people not quite sure what the difference is, okay? So let's start off with the mechanical brake. Um, traditional mechanical brake is something like this. So you've got a part here, this, this ring here is fixed inside the drum or at the end of the drum, outside the drum, depending on the design. But we've got a mechanical brake supported by two bearings. And within this, you can see there is a little cam mechanism. So as the two parts move in opposite directions, it rides up the cam and gets the brake to lock. So how does this actually fit in a winch? Well, what happens is the cut part is fixed on your motor shaft. This part here is fixed normally inside the drum, hence these four holes around the outside grub screws hold it into the drum. And your drive shaft, or in this case, an Allen key, is your drive shaft connecting the motor to the gearbox and from there the drive goes onto the drum. So when everything's rotating in the same direction, the drum turns, the gearbox turns, everything works. But let's say we stop winching for a moment. Uh, the motor stops, the gearbox stops, but then the drum tries to rotate back out again. And what would happen is it locks. You can see that I can't, everything's now moving as one. With a mechanical brake, the cone inside has expanded due to the cam mechanism and it's got everything to lock up. It can take a little bit of force in the line. Sometimes if the load is very low, it takes a while for the cam to react and expand. And with these, you do get the issue where you get um, heat. You still get heat with an air brake, but we'll look at why it works better with an air brake next. Okay? All right. So, this is an air brake. What's it do? Well, it works in conjunction with the motor. So, if we grab a motor, and it would fit onto our motor like so. And we'll just get to line up a second. There we go. And we'd have an air supply. Now, what's actually going on? On our winches, in essence, you have power for your solenoid coming in here to tell the winch to winch in or winch out. And as well as being connected to the terminals on your solenoid on the back of the winch here, we've also got it connected to this air solenoid. So every time we give the winch a signal to winch in or winch out, it activates the air brake to release. Think commercial vehicles where you're putting in air to get the brakes to release. And that's exactly what's going on here. So obviously this isn't connected up to an air supply. And as you can see here, I cannot turn that. And that's our drive. It would be connected to a gear or to can transfer the power into the gearbox and yeah, it won't turn. So let's pop to the workshop a second and put some air into this and we'll see how it turns. So here we are in the workshop. I've now got the air brake connected up to an airline. Still no air into it, so it won't turn. If I, but if I see how I turn the air on, see how that plate's dropped slightly. So the spring uh, have been compressed and now the air brake will rotate. I take the pressure off, the plate comes back up, brake's locked. Off, on, off. So, as you see, the air brake reacts really quickly. Now, where that makes a huge difference is preventing overrun in your winch. Uh, we're all familiar with the traditional 8274 uh, design where everybody got used to the fact that when you stopped winching, if there was no load in the line, it could take four, six, possibly even eight feet of rope in, depending on how fast the winch is geared. With an air brake, it doesn't matter how fast it's going, the moment you stop it, uh, winching in, the winch line stops. So, the air brake, we're now on a new version. Internally, nothing has changed. It's all the same internals, but the housing's changed. Um, why did we do that? Really because saving space on the low line winches where we've got the air brake out on the end of the winch, just reducing the overall width of the winch for that. Uh, so as you can see, it's quite a big difference between them. If you're ordering spares from us, all the parts are the same. The brakes pads are the same, the reaction plates are the same, everything internally is the same. We just now have this sat basically proud, with the um, connection for the gear proud with the ends of the 
air brake unit, whereas before it was recessed down. Um, so one thing to note, if you're looking at Hornets and looking to change your gear set from an overdrive to a standard or a standard to an overdrive, we've got the current gears where this part here to the castellations is quite short. Uh, on the earlier model gears, it's uh, a longer length. So just make sure you know which one you're ordering just to make sure that your gears connect to the brake stool. Uh, if you're not sure, drop us an email. We'll be more than happy to help you with that. Okay. So with the air brake, reaction time, super fast. What are the advantages of it? Well, with all of our winches with the air brake, the brake is away from the drum. So any heat that does get built up through the use of the brake here is isolated away from your rope. If it's our low line winches, it's right out on the end of the gearbox. If it's a high mount winches, it's normally between, it's always sorry, between the motor and then the gearbox and the drive. So we keep all the heat away from the brakes. Another advantage to the air brakes is they're tunable. So inside your air brake, when you pull it apart, you can fit up to 12 springs. As standard from the factory here, we would supply you with eight springs. So you'd expect to see it something like this. Now, the reason we only go for eight is because the brake is tunable to the weight of the vehicle. So sometimes people will say, well, really like my Hornet, it's working really well, but I'm finding it's not quite holding. Sometimes it's slipping a little bit. So then it's just a case of adding a couple of extra springs. Now, the only rule with adding springs is always add them in pairs. Don't just add one because it will set things off balance. So if I wanted to take up to 10 springs, could easily pop an extra couple in, reassemble it, circle it back in, job done. And the reason we don't add 10, 12 springs from the factory though is you don't want a winch that basically does an emergency stop every time. And when you get up to 12 springs, it can be very snappy, very sharp with how hard the brake comes on. So we find that eights, okay for 90% of our customers, but if you do need to add some extra springs in, or if you've got a particularly heavy truck and you, when you're ordering from us, let's say your truck's three tons plus, let us know, we'll happily pop some extra springs in the brakes for you from the factory. It's not a problem at all. Now, there's another couple of cool tricks that you can do with an air brake. When you go to lower using a winch, sometimes, particularly with the faster competition winches, your truck is traveling downhill, you're winching out, and maybe the gradient changes a little bit, and you move a further distance than the rope has, sorry, you move a shorter distance than the rope has spooled out. So you end up with slack line. Then it gets a bit steeper and your truck drops and you get a sudden shock load through the system. Now, that's not great because the shock load can cause damage to your winch, it could cause damage to your winch line, so with an air brake, what we can do is we can think about using the brakes only to lower the vehicle. Now, if I pop this back together for a second, because it's really easy. If with our motors, I switch off the isolator to the motor, but I've still got power to my winch control, when I go to winch out, it will release the brake. It doesn't uh, power out. So then when I'm going downhill, if I'm letting off the brake, the truck will only roll as fast as gravity wants to take it. And only the correct amount of rope for the distance traveled will be pulled off the drum. As soon as I want to stop moving, I take my finger off the winch out button, the brake comes on, stops the truck. And we don't get any nasty shock loading in the system by uh, lowering like that. We will do a video, an actual proper demonstration in the near future, we'll get one of the vehicles, we'll get out onto one of our sites and we'll do some lowering just using the brakes. But it is another really cool feature. Finally, with the air brake, we like to refer to this as a true load holding brake. Because you can tune it to the weight or that the winch is gonna be put under, we can set this up so whatever load that your winch is gonna be pulling, this will guarantee to hold it. Hope this helps.